This is my brand new signature overdrive pedal. The drive through from Vanda Guitars and I'm so excited to share it with you all. Well, hello everyone, it's Jemma Mactabe here. I just wanna say thank you so much for tuning into this video. I really appreciate it. If it's your first time here and you don't know who I am, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Jemma Mactabe, but you can call me Jem for short or Jemmy Gems according to my social medias. I'm a session touring musician, a music producer and a music director here from Sydney, Australia. And I have worked with the likes of people like Cade Fainer and Gabby Barrett from American Idol. And people like Nigel Hendroff, City Light, Luke Munns, Stoogy and other people in the Christian music world. I'm also a guy who plays on multiple records and sessions that range from pop gigs to funk to blues, rock, jazz, just pretty much anything, you name it. I love playing it all. And I'm here to talk to you guys about my brand new signature overdrive pedal, the drive-through from Vanda Guitars. So what is this funky pedal? What's the backstory of it? How did it come to be? What's its design features? And what's it sound like? And what do the controls do? So I'm gonna talk about that. But first, let's get on with the backstory of this pedal. <laughs> So if any of you guys have been following me for quite some time, in December of 2022, I threw up a little video of me playing this unbranded, unnamed uh, dual overdrive uh, from Vanda Guitars, which I labeled the Mystery Overdrive. And this is pretty much the, the, the base of what the drive-through is become. But prior to any relationship with Dave from Vanda Guitars, uh, my main overdrive pedal has been this Jetta Jet Drive version 2. I've been using this pedal since, I don't know, 2011, 2012, so a very, very long time. And it has really shaped uh, the core of my sound, my playing, what I go for in an overdrive, and I've played so many different two-in-one overdrives out there. I played everything from a King of Tone to a Duelist to a Protein and many others. Sweet Teas, Double Barrels from JHS and none of them have, have beat this pedal for me. I love the way that it reacts with my playing, the guitars that I use, the amps that I play through. I love how the two different channels are different from each other yet when they are cascaded together they blend so well. The green channel is like a really nice transparent uh, type overdrive where it's like your amp just on the edge of breakup and when you crank up the gain on the green channel it stays nice and natural the low end doesn't fart out on you the mid range stays nice and pronounced but it's, it's not a two screamer it's literally like your amp and the blue channel is a bit more uh, of a mid hump but not as drastic as a two screamer it doesn't cut out the low end like a tube screamer and it has more dynamic range in its gain and the way it's touched it's still nice and touch sensitive but it still gives you enough of a mid boost for awesome solos or thick, chunkier rhythms. So having one channel as uh, an almost always on type uh, overdrive, and then the blue channel as like my gain stage two, and then stacking these together for like my solo tone has been an absolute dream. So my relationship with Van der Guitars actually started sometime early last year. Uh, my older brother, Jarrell, who is an, an absolute gear nut like me, um, said that he has a friend who actually makes guitars and his name is Dave. 
and he told me to check out his guitars and his Instagram and he said we should get connected to each other so we, we started talking on Instagram and I started checking out his guitars if you want to check out his guitars they're on his website and on his social medias at Vanda Guitars or vandaguitars.com.au and then he also told me that he was working on making some pedals so I saw an Instagram post about Dave selling some pedals so I bought a BC108 fuzz that he made which is his take on like a Sunface type fuzz and also like a Carl Martin Plexitone clone which was amazing because not only was the fuzz amazing but the the Plexitone actually replaced my very first pedal which is an MI Audio Crunchbox Distortion version 2 from 2008. What I loved about the Plexitone clone is it was this pedal but with two extra channels and I was like man I gotta have that. So that was pretty awesome. So as Dave continued to work on some overdrive pedals um, I, I, I tried out this pedal of his that he made which is like his take on like almost like a ZVX box of rock um, pedal and I absolutely fell in love with this pedal because I loved how dynamic it was it wasn't just like your like a like an overdriven like a JTM 45 but it, it, it cleaned up really nice it had a nice pronounced mid-range and I loved the boost take on it like the the boost in this is like a ZVX super hard and kind of gave me more so I told Dave I love this pedal and then he, he he messaged me and he said what are your thoughts about if I made you an overdrive pedal. I was like, make me an overdrive pedal. I'd, I'd love that. That would be pretty cool. I think I have a pretty uh, pretty cool idea of what I'd want in an overdrive pedal because seriously, I haven't found anything that beat this pedal yet. And he goes, oh, what are your thoughts about if I made you like a signature overdrive pedal and we like release it to the public? I was like, what? A signature overdrive pedal? For a nobody like me, are you sure? But I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I think I have an idea that if we made something together, we have something to offer people that is really awesome. Uh, I have I have no doubt that this pedal, if we made something together, it's super versatile and it can work well with any guitar, any amp, any kind of pickups. And so he was like, all right, cool. Let me send you some, some pedals that I'll make and see which one you like. So around August of 2022, Dave sent me three types of overdrive circuits. So he sent me like a pedal he made, which is like a blues breaker type circuit with a boost. He sent me like a Jan Ray type circuit. And then he sent me this guy, which is like almost like a, a, a light speed style circuit, like a light speed Timmy thing. And when I played this, I immediately fell in love. So yeah, this this pedal was like um, like a like a light speed style overdrive, a light speed Timmy. And then the boost circuit on this was like a uh, an Electro Harm uh, Electro Harmonics LPB one. When you turned on the the boost on this, it was nice and greedy, almost like a distortion territory. So um, I'll share I'll share with you guys a little sound clip of of what this pedal sounds like. <laughs> So as you can hear, it was pretty much like more of my amp and just more of my guitar. The gain structure on it is really touch sensitive and when you pushed it hard, it, it distorted but the low end didn't didn't flub out on you, it, it was great. So I was like, man, it would be so cool though if 
we uh, we could try something where we combined this guy and this guy together. Um, Dave initially thought, oh, I don't know how that would work because he said, what if you just tried like this circuit and like the boost of this guy because I, I preferred the boost of of this pedal because it just gave me more because um, when I would use this this boost live, like I would kind of get lost in the mix because it like it kind of um, distorted it in a way where it would get a little too too uh too gritty well this one it was more smoother and it let my notes bloom a little more um dave was like you know what let me try and see what i can do if i combine both circuits together so he went to work and he created this guy and once i played this pedal i was like man i'm set this pedal absolutely beats my jetta jet drive i, I was absolutely blown away because this pedal doesn't compress the low end uh, as much as um the jetta because sometimes when you stack them, sometimes it would get a little too compressed. Not, not like it compresses anything crazy. But I love how this let the low end and the low, low mids bloom a little more. Um, literally so open and transparent. And so from this pedal, we went into this. So let me talk to you guys about the design of the drive through and how it came about and what the concepts are. So I'm a guy who's not very good at designing stuff and I didn't know what I wanted uh, for any ideas. Initially Dave said what if I like made you like a pedal which which was like a skateboard because if you guys don't know I actually make videos of me playing guitar while riding a green penny skateboard. Um, so I thought you know what that's actually a really co cool concept to have so I kept that skateboard concept in mind but I went to my friend Lucas Le Spinner because he's like an absolute design genius when it comes to like guitar stuff he has really cool ideas so I went to him I was like bro can you help me design like a signature pedal what do you think represents me and he goes well you love 80s culture and you love uh, Chick-fil-a and drive throughs and I was like oh, true I do so yeah uh, Lucas gave me the ideas of my love for 80s culture my love for Chick-fil-a and 80s retro diners so i was like all right so i got a day i was like if we made something like an 80s retro style diner theme and uh two different channels based off my favorite chick-fil-a order the number one deluxe that would be amazing so yeah that's where the design of the drive through came from it's my uh green and orange uh, penny skateboard the green deck and the orange wheels and uh, an 80s style neon diner logo and two different channels the number one deluxe based off my love for chick-fil-a and the name the drive through because i love drive throughs especially chick-fil-a's drive through is the best so that's the design now let's get over to the sounds and the features and the controls of the drive through <laughs> All right, so let me demonstrate to you guys what this pedal can do, and I'll demonstrate both sides individually and when cascaded together. I'll demonstrate how much range there is with the gain, how much range there is volume and its tone. I'll demonstrate it with different guitars, from a single coil telly to a Gretsch with Filtertrons, a, a Duesenberg, a semi hollow telly, a humbuckers, and I'll even demonstrate it with bass guitar, and I'll even change different amps. I'll go from a Vox style amp to like a Fender Princeton style amp, and maybe like higher gain amps like a Marshall Plexi and like a Friedman BE uh, amp. Uh, all tones are coming through my guitar straight from the drive through into the Line 6 HX stomp. Um, and Let's try it out. All right, so here's Telly going into the drive-through into the AC30 type turn in the HX Thump. And here's channel number one with unity volume and like no gain. Let me bump up the gain and like muck around with the tone. There's usually where I keep the gain up. Oh, right there's around where I usually keep the tone. Now the 
volume control on channel number one is actually very very powerful this can actually determine how much gain and how uh, how hard you're pushing your amp uh, using this volume control so if I keep my gain like around here but if I just adjust my volume listen to how much gain you begin to add into uh, the natural breakup of the amp <laughs> Pretty nuts. That's usually where I would keep my setting for channel number one for the sound that I'm going for, the feel, the dynamics. Uh, yeah, I usually like to keep uh, my settings in channel number one like this, uh, and I usually keep it on most of the time. But uh, it all depends on the kind of music I'm playing. I usually like it in this setting because if I'm playing nice and soft... It's nice and clean, but if I dig in... It gives me enough uh, juice to do some overdriven stuff, uh, like nice rhythms, and like simple bluesy lead stuff. Or if I'm playing funk. It's like I've barely got it on, but it gives me enough dynamics to kind of push it. But uh, let's continue to play, play with the tone control on channel number one. Very, very dynamic and usable tone control. It doesn't get too bright and it doesn't get too dark. Uh, I, I love that. It's usable and so um, tweakable for any kind of guitar or amp. Here it is on zero. And here it is just a little bit under under 12 o'clock. Notice how your low end doesn't get cut off or it's not, not adding any crazy mid-range frequencies or it's not boosting the highs too hard. It really is keeping your amp's natural tone intact uh, while giving you just a bit more. Let me try this tone with the same amp. Uh... All right, awesome. So that's usually where I would keep uh, channel number one. Now let's explore the deluxe channel a little bit. So this is a really juicy channel. Kind of gives you that Marshall JTM 45, almost bluesbreakerish kind of vibes. Um, here is everything on what I would say the unity gain is. This channel has a lot of juice in its output, so you gotta uh, be aware of that. 
uh, it'll push your amp and it'll push your guitar's tone really easily and even the low end so be mindful of that so here it is just clean here's my bridge pickup <laughs> It's a little darker, it's a little fatter. Nice and crunchy, nice and juicy. Let me push the gain up a little more. Yeah, nice and juicy, uh, really balanced, and it is a really powerful channel. What's awesome about the Deluxe channel is not only is it nice and juicy and crunchy, but it also has an element of transparency to it, even though it's got this really nice mid-range, which is a little more fuller than uh, channel number one, but it's also so dynamic. Like when you, t when you pick lighter, and clean. Again, you get that nice crunch. Usually I would push the gain a little more here. And I would like my tone set just a tad bit uh, to where it's almost sounding like my amp. Maybe just a little tad darker. Right there, like that, right there. Because when I stack them together, this is what you get with uh, my settings. <laughs> It gives me enough juice for thick, crunchy rhythms, and it also gives me enough dynamics to rip into a solo if I want to. That's pretty much the setting I like. So I'll use channel number one as like my main rhythm sound. Now I'll use the deluxe channel as like gain stage two. a bit more, stack the two together. Now I'll probably dial that back because it's a bit too... Awesome is even though they're stacked together and you have this huge sound, when you dial your picking just a touch, I'm not even gonna move my volume pedal, uh, volume control, 
But um, listen to how dynamic it is, even though it's nice and big. stays tight, the mid-range stays nice and focused, the highs are there nice and clear to cut enough through a mix but not killing your ears. It is so well balanced. <laughs> oh man, it's it's incredible and it has enough mids to give you uh, that push in a mix where uh, you can solo without it being so drastic like a tube screamer. Um, it's amazing. Like if I compare it with like a tube screamer with the deluxe channel, here's, here's the deluxe channel. And like here's a tube screamer from the stomp. Notice how the deluxe channel has a much more fuller low end. It's got a nice balanced mid range, but it's still uh, thick enough to cut through a mix. And the highs aren't so piercing. And the gain structure is nice and smooth and more dynamic than the tube screamer, which is a little more, little more compressed. So it doesn't have that crazy compression. Um, all right, let me try a different guitar into like a different amp. All right, so for the next guitar demonstration, let's try uh, the semi hollow telly with TV Jones magnetrons uh, into like a deluxe reverb using the drive through. Notice how I haven't even changed the settings, the EQ, the tone uh, of this whole setup. I haven't changed the, the tone knob of channel number one or the gain structure or the volume. And it's still super dynamic. It still lets the guitar sound like the guitar, still lets the amp sound like the amp. It's incredible. Let's try Deluxe. Oops. Even with a semi-hollow type guitar, uh, it still stays nice and tight and focused, but still sparkly and clear. It's an, it's insane. <laughs> Let's try this Duesenberg style play TV into like a Fender Princeton.
Xbox channel ya. Gretsch Nigel Handjoff signature penguin with these Gretsch Broadtrons into a Marshall JTM 45 uh, using the drive through. <laughs> channel. My gosh, the frequency spectrum is so wide on this guitar and the overdrives on this help accommodate that so, so well. All right, let's see what this pedal can do when pushing a dirty amp, an amp either that's already uh, crunchy and broken up to an amp with high gain. So here is this guitar with the lamp tones Kremers uh, going into like a Marshall Plexi type tone. <laughs> Here's channel one.
Lux side. Let me lower the gain a little. The deluxe channel with like a Marshall Plexi is like a dream tone. Oh my gosh. controls on the guitar are on 10. I'm not doing any volume changes or anything. This is how dynamic this pedal is and especially with these two different overdrive sets. <laughs> Listen to that. Both circuits stacked together with the gain quite high and it's not collapsing. The low end's not farting out on you, the mids aren't getting too overwhelming, and the highs aren't piercing. Jeez, look at that. Incredible. Alright, we're gonna try something a little more crazier. We're gonna go into this Ibanez RG and with the drive through into a like a Freeman BOD type tone. <laughs> Crunchiest side. It's getting a little extreme there, but it can handle it if you tweak it the right way. So as you can see, even with an amp in its highest gain setting, this pedal can can 
keep the low end nice and tight and the mid range focused while the gain doesn't really collapse on you and it's amazing what this pedal can do. The versatility of this pedal is wild. All right, so here's the drive through with the bass guitar. This is just a Squire Jazz bass going into like a GK800 type amp modeler. And here's the drive through. Here's channel number one. Notice how the low end doesn't cut out, it still stays nice and fat and thick but it gives you that nice overdriven edge that you would want out of an overdrive. And here's the deluxe channel with the bass. sounding overdrive for bass guitar oh my goodness <laughs> it's so good secret weapon for the bass guitar the vanda guitars drive through wow so that is the drive through by vanda guitars i am so 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 excited and proud of this pedal and i just want to give a huge thank you to dave at vanda guitars dave man thank you so much for believing in me and for you know entrusting me to represent your brand and this product i really do believe that this is the best overdrive pedal i've ever played and you know i don't even know if i deserve a signature of, you know anything because you know i'm there's many more other hard working popular guitarists out there in the world but you know thank you so much for choosing to believe in me and if you want to buy this pedal this pedal is available now at vandaguitars.com.au and I really do believe that this pedal can benefit anyone's guitar, anyone's guitar rig, their amp, or their pedal board. This can work with any type of pickup combination, amp and speaker type, any amp circuit, and it's, it's so great to have. And if you want to check out any more of my music stuff and like the music I create or what I'm up to, head out to my website at www.gemmelmaxabagmusic.com. And if you want to check out any of my Line 6 Helix and HX Stomp presets, they are available right now on Multitracks.com. And stay tuned because I am almost about to release my brand new Helix and HX Stomp presets with a 3.5 update. So that's it from me. I hope you guys get yourselves a drive-through and you guys have yourselves an amazing day. Peace out. <laughs>